Welcome back. So in the last lecture, I introduced the randomized SVD, which is a very computationally efficient algorithm to extract the dominant uh, rank R singular value decomposition from a large data matrix X if we believe that it has low rank intrinsic rank R. Now in practice, you don't actually want your random projection matrix to have exactly R columns. That's not the most effective thing. So there's two techniques uh, that can help. One is called oversampling. And that's essentially a technique where you just add a couple, maybe five or 10 extra, extra columns to this random projection matrix. So you make it just a tiny bit bigger and you have much, much, much better chance of capturing the dominant subspace of X when you do this, even for a relatively small additional cost, okay? So always recommended to oversample by five or 10 columns if possible. There's good rules of thumb. The other thing that's really useful is something called power iterations. Uh, and this one is especially useful if your data matrix is not exactly as low rank as you want it to be. So in lots of cases, uh, what you want is for your data matrix to have really, really low rank structure and then some small singular values, in which case you can probably approximate this rank R the dominant are singular values up here using these methods. But oftentimes what your data matrix actually looks like is you have a much slower drop off in singular values. And so what you can do is by essentially taking powers of X, and I'll, you know X is a rectangular matrix, so I'll tell you what I mean by taking powers of X in a minute. You can essentially, you know, this is the singular value distribution of X, but the singular value distribution of x squared, you would square all of these. So the little ones become even littler. And so by taking power iterations, you can essentially drive this singular value distribution down until it looks more like what you want it to look like. Okay, and so the way that you actually do that, you would introduce this matrix x to the power q, uh, which is equal to um, x times x transpose to the power q, times your original data matrix X. Now you don't actually ever compute this massive square matrix to compute X to the power Q, but instead when you're projecting X down to, uh, with P, you essentially multiply it on the left by X transpose and then again by X, and you do that again and again and again Q times. Okay, so this is absolutely more expensive. It requires more passes through this really big data matrix. And that's often the expensive part is, you know, I have to multiply, I have to go through this whole data matrix at least once to compute this, uh, this sketch Z. If I use power iterations, if I use Q power iterations, I have to go through Q more passes of my data matrix X. So it can be a lot more expensive, but again, it also gives much, much better um, performance if you have slower decay in your singular values and you want them to look like they decay faster. So if you really want to capture the first R singular values and they don't decay that rapidly, you're going to need to do power iteration even though it comes with this extra cost of more passes through your data. And of course passes through your data is very expensive because who wants to multiply a billion by million matrix at more times than you need to. Okay, uh, There are guaranteed error bounds for the approximation performance of this low rank singular value decomposition based on things like the rank, the singular value distribution, the amount of oversampling, the amount of power iterations, and so on and so forth. The simple formula is in our book uh, in section 1.8 but there are more elaborate formulas in the literature that have tighter bounds that can give you really, really good um, guidelines for how to choose these values for, for your particular application. Okay, so next we're gonna code this up on some examples. Thank you.